We move forward to Dr. Rohit Shetty from the Narayana Netralaya Eye Institute in Bangalore, India. Hello, Dr. Shetty. What time is it in India? Let us know. <laughs> it's 2.45 in the afternoon. Very good. Thank you for being with us and for presenting live on our symposium. It's a real pleasure to have such a, a power user uh, and, uh, and uh, a refractive surgeon in, in all fields and, and all categories uh, with us. And that's not surprising that your title is corresponding to your skills, total imaging for anterior segment surgeon. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, can I have my slides, please? Okay. My talk today is uh, total imaging for anterior segment surgeon. I thank uh, Stephen and uh, the Heidelberg team for this opportunity. And uh, these are my financial interests. Uh, I do do research for uh, Heidelberg, but that has no implication on my presentation today. I called it the eye of providence because uh, it, this technology does a total mapping of everything. I think uh, the previous speaker, Professor Oliver, Oliver Findel, has mentioned about its role in looking at corneal topography, corneal evaluation, the cataract, even trying to looking at the back, that's going to be the future. We also have options of glaucoma. I'm sure this is going to be covered by the speakers after me. But how should we a total imaging be? It should be compared to the gold standard, which is very important. It should do multitasking. In COVID times, we have understood the power of uh, multiple scans and trying to avoid multiple scans into one and that should be the power of this it should be repeatable which is, again professor findel uh, mentioned about it all this if you can do it then i call it as a total imaging i'm sh very sure at the end of my talk you will understand that that definition of total anterior comes very close to it these are the features the imaging the corneal apps the metrics and the cataract apps all that fitted into one uh, the principle has already been discussed, uh, but what I want to say is its depth resolution, both in length and how it can go deeper using the wavelength of 1,300 1, nanometer. Comparison is always a thief of joy, but it's important that we look at always the comparison to the gold standard, but that especially when a new machine comes up. Let's look at topography. When you look at topography out here, it gives you all the patterns, what you see in any topographers. It gives you higher order aberrations. It gives you comparative maps, which looks at uh, the change happening during, during uh, especially during catacornus. How does it compare with the gold standard of a pentacam? It's very important. Let's look at these two images. More or less in the curvature and everything else, it looks perfectly healthy. But let's look at the posterior elevation, which is the one of the strength of uh, Scheinflug imaging. What is important is both of them do match very closely. And when you compare it the biomechanics, which is the CBI, which is weaker in this case, even though you know, the Heidelberg is not connected to the biomechanics, it matches to the weaker biomechanics, which means that it is doing the doing what it's supposed to do and telling a refractive surgeon to be careful in these cases. Let's look at the second case, exactly the same thing, exactly matching with the post elevation, exactly matching with the biomechanics, which is again bang on on this. Again, this is a patient which has got a skimming of axis, which is one of the earliest sign of uh, suspicious of form frustratoconus. Again, in XY skimming, you know that both the machines give the same reading. And again, the biomechanics is weaker, which means that the machine was telling the truth. This is a case with very steep corneas, no posterior elevation. It just looks like a steep eye 
and exactly matches with the pentagram out there. It's not a character corners, it's just steepening, which is again good for us because it's trying to not to confuse us in any way. And this is a patient with uh, again the post elevation, which picks up very well here. Again, the biomechanics. So I can go on multiple things on multiple images, and everything it matches perfectly. When we compared with the repeatability of pentagram, and this is something in manuscript uh, in, uh, in preparation, you can see all of them match very well. And this is a technology, it's a god of wisdom. Today is a festival, and uh, you know, we pray for the god of wealth and wisdom. And what, what we did was we looked at machines which can be affected with the tear film abnormalities. And the back tear film we know can affect in a very bad way. And we know that placido base, especially have been heavily affected and so is sign flug in many ways. So what we did was we looked at uh, using this uh, OCT based system and tried to do the repeatability. And we found that even in a very poor uh, ocular surface uh, changes, the repeatability was much better. This is an ongoing study, so I don't have a complete data on it. But what I'm going to say here is that Based on interim results, the repeatability was very good, even in spite of a very poor ocular surface. And we used the ocular surface scatter of uh, double pass per uh, barometer from uh, uh, vision metrics or the OCAS to, un to understand how, how this was happening. And this is a very important point, especially when you're looking at the repeatability of any machines. Cataract, which is, helps in multiple things, has already been discussed by uh, Oliver, so I don't want to go too deep into this. It looks at your because of the wavelength, you can able to image much deeper. You have this image which gives you the biometry, and it uses the ray tracing, uh, which looks at all the other measurements. It looks at uh, uh, this application combining the co the cornea as well as the anterior segment, which is again a very important point out here, which which gives you the best of two. That's what it means. And beautiful uh, cataract suite which looks at all the formulas which can be customized and you can help in building a perfect IOL you want using the target refraction, IOL formulas, IOL constants, and IOL power. I mean, I don't want to go too deep into this, but just use an example. There are a few examples of dense cataracts where you know that even the IOL master was not able to penetrate IOL master 700, and we were able to get. A very good uh, data of this. This is very important because in many countries where you have, you do get a very dense cataracts. It's very important that you get uh, a good penetration and a good IOL uh, uh, axial length and IOL measurement. And again, grade three dense posterior subcapsular cataract, IOL master not able to get it, but you're able to get this very easily on this. And these are all cases where. Even grade four and dense PSC is able to penetrate, and that shows the power of uh, what it's doing. That's why in the beginning I did mention as a total. Total means it has to go through all kinds of situation, not in very good uh, corneas or very good uh, cataracts. It has to be everywhere, and this is this is one example. Few examples which explains about that. Again, extremely good in uh, myopic eyes. You can use different formulas out here. You can choose the formulas even very short and long eyeballs and then you can you know you can be very accurate with your uh, formulas toric planning it has its own uh, incision set sis you can plan it and also derived iols which can be done uh, this is important because it looks at preoperatively it helps to look at fluid clefts anteriorly visualization of the posterior capsules you can see that based on this you understand whether you're going to get uh, excessive pressure in the capsule when you do a rexis and if you're if you're fluid clefts with away from the anterior capsule you know that better support of the rexis and may not have an argentinian sign especially useful when you're training your residents and these are very very useful tools or useful measures in your training and this is something which we use it in all our uh, practice uh, looks at the yeah, caps uh, pre and post and uh, posterior polar cataract look at you can see that the posterior capsule is intact out here and post operatively everything is perfectly all right and here uh, again you can see that there's a breach in the posterior capsule again explain to the patient 
tell the patient that there could be a posterior capsular rent. And you can look at this, there's a breach in the posterior capsule and you can see that the rent which was there, which was anticipated. So this can be planned. This is a very useful tool because not all OCTs give you that exact measurement of your posterior capsule and especially integrity. The previous case I showed had a completely healthy posterior capsule. This one I am showing has a breach, which means that even when before we did the surgery, the patient was informed and we had informed about this kind of a scenario which can happen. This is again a subluxated blunt trauma. You can see the vitreous out there and uh, which can be explained to the patient and optically dense nucleus, uh, which is uh, which is seen on the, on the measurement out there. And uh, this is a scenario where, you know, you can look at an early cataract changes even though the pentacam has the pns grading this machine does not still give you that but uh, you know you can you can make out that you know every, all the aberrations are perfectly healthy you can see that the changes in the nucleus so which gives an example that uh, there is fluids in the cleft in nucleus with example that that could be related to the cataract and early cataract surgery can be planned this is something which is very important what the uh, uh, the uh, the eye trace called the dysfunctional lens syndrome. We can actually, it's an optical phenomena, but here you can actually see it uh, by showing some early changes of fluid clefts or uh, fluid vacuoles, which can be seen on the uh, on the uh, on the lenses. Uh, repeatability has already been mentioned, and uh, we also found the same result. We published this uh, two years back, and uh, both agreement and repeatability was good with the IOL Master Seven Hundred and Lens Star. Corneal applications, uh, both in deep and lamellar keratoplasty, it helps to show how the pre and post-op. This helps to look at the graft hose junction of DSEC, which is very useful. Uh, Pseudophagic bullous keratopathy, pre and post, uh, after epithelial debridement, and when you put a contact lenses on. Uh, HSV endothelitis with stromal edema. You can see how the stromal edema reduces after the treatment with corticosteroids. Fuchs endothelial dystrophy, again, beautiful uh, representation of uh, dystrophy out there. And uh, this is uh, res resolution of desmet membrane detachment post cataract surgery with the SF uh, injections, the air injections. How does it work in glaucoma? Used to look at the angles, the pachymetry, iridotomy, estimation of the angle, and anterior segment dysgenesis can also be looked at. The normal anterior uh, angle structures, uh, which is there, can be easily looked at anatomically, uh, which is like how you do a gonioscopy. And there are different uh, measurements now, which is there in the machine, uh, which is the an an angle open distance, anterior chamber angles. All this has already been given, and this helps us to understand uh, how the angle anatomy is. Uh, trabecular iris space areas these are all new terminologies which is from the oct driven uh, space and all this is given beautifully which uh, which helps the surgeon to understand the anatomy of the angle without it's a non-invasive way this is again uh, angle closure uh, uh, suspect we looked, did an yak pi and when you do an yak pi this are the angle uh, marking out there once you do an eac pi out there you can see that the angles opens up there's dispersion of pigments on the anterior chamber and what's important here is that all the angle measurements completely changes which means that your angle the eac pi has worked and you have you have made the person from a suspect to something which is much more uh, better for in long run for the patient this and this helps to make the patient understand that the importance of eac pi and this is like a patient education tool. It also helps in looking at uh, the pleb anatomy. I know, I know sometimes you need a needling or the release of the pleb. There's fibrosis or changes out there. And all that really helps to uh, for the glaucoma surgeon. So what is the future? Uh, you know, what is the wish list is that you can work on something like DLI and building a tool can be done or looking at the epithelial maps in the future which is probably one of the things which is necessary. So I did in this given time explain about one tool, which is a wisdom for every specialty. And I, I, I hope I did justice to my definition as a total tool. Thank you.
Thank you very much indeed, Rohit, uh, for this excellent overview. I have to disappoint you in one item, which is uh, only tomorrow we will have a talk about glaucoma, not today in that session, but Benjamin Xi will give a, a lecture about glaucoma. So this is an advertisement to come back tomorrow to the anterior segment session if you want to enjoy glaucoma, but you already mentioned the most important points. And you gave this overview, which leaves pretty much no questions. But um, we have one question in the chat, which is not probably related to the imaging, but you showed that case of decement membrane uh, detachment. Um, um, and the question is, what? What would you recommend to do? We use uh, air or SF6 uh, injections into the eye, and uh, you know where a C3 F8 injection. We know these uh, these really help to uh, reduce the, uh, uh, the reduce the detachment, and they usually heal very fast. Okay, very good. And at that point, again, um, uh, two. Uh, Two hints, um, the rest of the panel here can actually ask questions as well to Rohit. So every prior speaker or later speaker, if you have questions, just let the technicians know you are live connected to them, raise your hand or leave a chat note so we can plug you in and you can ask a question. And for the rest of the audience in the upper right corner, you can leave a question by text chat. Um, however, I mean, how long do you have the anterior at the moment, Rohit? Can you remind me? Well, Close uh, two and a half years. Two and a half years. I mean, I have the impression, I mean, not because of today, but of, of many years, that are you using all the specialities yourself? Are you doing glaucoma, cornea, cataract, the, the, the full thing yourself? Or how large is the team using it? I, I think oh, I don't use it all myself. I use only for refractive surgery and keratoconus. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, all the departments I mentioned are using it all the time. Okay, okay. And uh, to go back to the very first session, can you, and this is, yeah, and uh, there will be a, a question by Oliver in a second, but we, we heard at the beginning, you haven't been there maybe already, but we have heard the, the information exchange. How is your anterior um, linked between the departments? Or they just come all to one place and the data is taken from there or are you spreading them in your, in, in your digital infrastructure? They come to one place and then it's spread to all the other specialties. Yeah, good. So it's time for question. Oliver, you have a question. Yeah, Rohit, thank you very much. A great presentation. I wanted to ask you for toric lenses. So, because we discussed that very briefly before, would you um, now still do an, an additional placido topography? Or are you uh, ha happy by going ahead um, with uh, calculating the toric lens directly from your anterior data? Uh, so far, on the experience, what we have had, it's being very accurate. So, we can do away with the digital measurement. Okay, and another question also because you said database, do you actually use HiX2 to um, have all the data, you know, uh, so it can be seen by everybody from the anterior or do you, do you actually use the anterior as a sole uh, machine on its own or do you actually have it in, 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 on your server and that's uh, all your department access the data? So we have not been able to do that yet, but you know, even now, you know, we have to upload the images every time we do. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, software does not uh, still allow the seamless connection between this and the uh, and the soft and the machine. Yeah, because we have, I think, since two or three months now, we have it in the HiX2 platform. So that means everybody in the department can see the images wherever they are, which is really nice, actually, and also gives you a good backup because you don't have to be worried about backup failure. Well, that's it. Thank, Thank you very much. Great talk about it.